Hello. Welcome to the Judge Ben Show. My name is Ben Joseph. I'm a retired Vermont Superior Court judge. This is a program in which I interview people about issues that concern the uh, Vermont legal system. I'm very pleased today to say that I'm going to be able to interview David Slay, a Vermont attorney in private practice. David, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, let's just, just to get started, do you have your own office? I do. Uh, I have an office in uh, St. Johnsbury. I've been in since the physical space since 1983. Whoa, <laughs> you're a veteran. Um, and is, is that how long you've been in private practice, since 83? No, I started here as a public defender in August of 1983, uh -huh. and then went into private practice, staying put physically in uh, May of uh, 1991. Wow. Wow. And you specialize in any specific areas of the law? We do primarily criminal defense and uh, related uh, civil practice. Uh, we do a fair amount of civil rights plaintiffs work and uh, excessive force cases, uh, prison medical malpractice cases, that sort of thing. Wow. Do any of your cases go to court? Uh, virtually all of them do. Uh, so in the criminal cases, they pretty much start out in court. Sometimes we can resolve a civil case without filing, but uh, not as often as I'd like. So <laughs> I'm sure. Pretty much all our cases are uh, in active litigation in courts across the state and, and sometimes even in other states. Wow. Uh, do you try cases in, do you have cases in many counties in Vermont? I have had in the past instances where I had pending cases in every county in Vermont. Wow. Right, right now I don't have any pending in uh, Addison, Rutland, or Grand Isle, but all the 11 other counties I do. Wow, that's impressive. Do you have delays in getting your cases uh, resolved in some of these counties? Yes, uh, and you know, to some extent, historically, there have been peaks and troughs, if, if you will, in terms of the backlogs, and sometimes in a particular court, sometimes uh, statewide. Uh, but certainly, uh, since sometime prior to the COVID pandemic and through it, the, the delays have become, uh, you know, unprecedented, uh, severe. I mean, I have cases, criminal cases uh, that are pending in both Orleans and Essex County that are over four and a half years old. Wow. Are any of those defendants in, uh, incarcerated waiting trial? I have just two, but um, that's primarily as a, a private practice uh, lawyer. I don't wind up representing uh, lots of folks who are detained pretrial. Uh, I know at one point uh, in Orleans County, there were over 100 people uh, who were uh, in jail for over a year uh, before their uh, cases have been heard. I, I don't know what the current statistics are, but my suspicion is it hasn't improved a whole lot. You know, we we actually filed last, I guess, fall motions to dismiss for lack of speedy trial in 27 of my cases in Orleans County. 22 of those cases were uh, dismissed uh, for lack of speedy trial. And um, I'm sure you recall from your days in defense and when litigating, it, it's a pretty rare thing to get a, a court to dismiss a case for lack of speedy trial, even when the delay has been two or three years. Uh, but in this instance, these cases were old, no real progress had been made. All of, them been, all of them had been pending at least a year before the pandemic. And there were just inadequate resources to, to make the trials happen. Were some of these cases felonies? I mean, there were serious charges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to be frank about it, out of the 22 that got dismissed, I think only three were uh, felonies. Quite a few of them were uh, misdemeanors, um, and, and that makes sense, I guess. 
Um, but yeah, so they weren't all just uh, uh, prohibited uh, property offenses. There were some felonies that got dismissed. Wow. And are, some, are these delays more more of a problem in some counties than others, or? Yes, I think so. I mean, I think um, one of the reasons we were able to get favorable decisions on our motions to dismiss in Orleans County is that we were uh, able to demonstrate that there were known problems with the backlog before the pandemic, known problems with the physical facilities known mm -hmm. long before the pandemic, and that there is simply no effort to address those in a meaningful way. Uh, Orleans uh, was the last county to, to start uh, jury trials after the pandemic. Initially, they were going to be held in um, neighboring counties with forced uh, venue changes. That option is what's still happening in Essex. I don't know what's happening in Grand Isle right now. Essex, the courthouse is essentially closed. I mean, uh, the um, business is being done entirely in St. Johnsbury. The judiciary maintains that the facility out there is not adequate to uh, conduct jury trials, and there seems to be uh, no uh, um, plan to resume them anytime soon. So. You know, you look at places like Orleans, Essex, Grand Isle, uh, they, they're habitually uh, under-resourced and, from my point of view, uh, ignored. Uh, I think that's consistent in one way with some of the judiciary's sort of long-term thoughts about the value of having uh, courthouses in small counties. Uh, I think you were probably on the bench uh, when the courts were unified. That is to say, there was no longer a distinction between the Superior Court and the District Court. And the whole administration of the courts changed from individual county clerks, to regional clerks, and all that stuff. But part of that plan, that reunification plan, as it was initially pursued by the, jury, by the judiciary, was to close the courthouses and Grand Isle and Essex, and to create um, regional courts. And while uh, that was um, not part of the final plan, the legislature bristled at that, it's become almost a, a de facto reality. I'm bristling as you say that. <laughs> as someone who lives in Grand Isle, the thought that, uh, you know, a jury trial would be moved from Grand Isle to Chittenden County, <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> A case from Isle of Mott shouldn't have to go to Burlington for a trial, uh, I, in my opinion. You know, I, I think it's, uh, it really is denying access to the courts, which is guaranteed by the Vermont State Constitution, by the by. You know. and exactly. And, you know, when you look at these smaller counties, they tend to be economically depressed compared to their neighbors. They have uh, fewer opportunities for... Uh, public transportation. I mean, if you're a defendant or a, a putative victim and you live in Maidstone and you have to get to St. Johnsbury uh, for your trial, I mean, not only is it the, the time involved to, to get there, uh, it's a real burden uh, in people's lives to have to travel that far to get access to the courts. And it's, it, it's clearly unconstitutional. It's just not right. I mean, it, it's a, a fundamental part of a functioning democratic society to be able to participate in criminal jury trials. And that's essentially been denied to the citizens of Essex County for several years at this point. It had been denied in the citizens of Orleans County for a better part of two years. And like I said, I, I, I talked to Doug Savado from time to time. My understanding is that the Grand Isle Courthouse may be open for some things, but it's not open for jury trials. And that's really the bedrock of the whole criminal justice system. If you, if you don't have the prospect for a jury trial at the end of the case, the case is never going to end. Well, that was very well put. That's certainly consistent with what I what I see in, in my county, in Grand Isle County. It's... Uh, 
I just uh, I do not understand why people don't attach more value to these to these basic rights. It's like uh, if it doesn't involve them, it, it's not important. I, I guess I, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. I think it's, there's just a large disconnect these days. Um, and I, I don't want to sound like the grumpy old man, but you know, we're, I'll, I'll, I'll be the grumpy old man. You go ahead. <laughs> I mean, when when we went to high school in ninth grade, we all took a course co uh, called civics. Yeah. And it was a, a course about how our democracy was structured, how bills became laws, separation of powers, the important rights that you had in jury trials. And people were educated in that. Nowadays, I mean, you own, lots of people only care about a jury trial if they're A, have to testify, or B, they're charged. And it just seems to be something that's dropped out of our collective consciousness. But it truly is. Uh, the bedrock of our uh, whole governmental system. I mean, it is the break pad between uh, tyranny and liberty, and it really is critical. Wow. Yeah, well, I, 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 mean, I couldn't say, I can't tell you how much I agree with what you said. I think this is such an important issue, but it seems to be just, it's off the screen. <laughs> I mean, it's on the screen today when you and I are talking, but it's just something that there's not, not much public consciousness about. Well, when we did the speedy trial litigation up in Orleans, there was a fair amount of, of press coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the judiciary itself, uh, uh, during the litigation, said that there'd be no trials in Orleans County until there was either a new building uh, constructed or uh, having trials out of county shortly after the motion started to get granted they discovered that if they put an air circulator in the building they could start uh, jury trials again and they did but once the uh sort of public attention that dismissals for lack of speedy trial waned we haven't seen any uh uptick in trying to to resume uh jury trial say in, in essex county as far as i know you know, nothing's happening. I wrote to the court administrator today and said that I know that several months ago, uh, buildings and grounds, the state's sort of the property management service and the judiciary had contractors out looking at the Guild Hall Courthouse to see what would be needed to um, bring it up to code, so to speak, so we could do jury trials out there. And, you know, I haven't had a word, heard a word, so I wrote the the court administrator today said, well, what's the timeline? What's the nature of the fix? When's it going to get started? And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if we hear anything. Well, I want to I want to be sure you understand that this interview is being taped. And that tape will be available. It's going to be released, broadcasted seven or eight more times. But a copy will be sent to you. And you can forward it to the people you think should should know about this stuff. And, uh, no, really, I think it's it's quite important. I think that, you know, we are all kind of preoccupied with, between, uh, you know, between uh, the invasion of the Ukraine and our own problems here at home uh, that uh, seem to take precedence. So I think the more the things that you've discussed here today are broadcasted and are understood by the pu by the public better results we'll have. I've been encouraged because for a while this was all, you know, they're crying about money. We don't have money. But now they've got money. <laughs> you know, there's money. And that money... Yeah, they've got more money than they could ever dream of. Yeah, exactly. And for them to, to start talking about how we, we're going to save money, I mean, I, gosh, oh, goodness sake. <laughs> it's upsetting. It really is upsetting. The, when you have these cases, do you find that the delays hurt the defense or help the defense? You know, I think in, in some ways it cuts both ways. I mean, when we were litigating the speedy trial um, uh, motions, I had uh, my clients testify about the adverse impact on their lives uh, that having a criminal charge uh, pending right. uh, poses on them. I mean, People don't go to school, they don't get jobs, they can't travel, 
I mean, there's just all sorts of things that uh, are collateral to, to being charged. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, on the other hand, um, uh, uh, memories fade, people lose interest, people move away. You know, the state's ability to marshal everyone together to try to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt probably decays mm-hmm. over time. So, you know, there are, there are pluses and minuses on, on both sides of the V, so to speak. Well, you've got, I, I gather you've dealt with cases where they've been pending for years. Is that right? Sure, huh? Yeah. Years. I have a embezzlement case, which is the lead case in the uh, speedy trial litigation, uh, that was filed in early 2018. 2018? Yeah, four years. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. I don't know why this isn't something that's a big public issue and there's a big, uh, a lot of concern about it. I speculate that the delays, people assume these delays involve defendants who are, uh, who are guilty. <laughs> so they don't care. No, really, I, I, what, could, what could be behind this? I don't know. Well, you know, there are a couple of different things from my point of view. I mean, in, in serious cases, and I have a contract with the state where I provide um, uh, representation to people who accuse of so-called serious felonies. I mean, the expectation for defense counsel these days, um, you know, with a looming uh, ineffective assistance claim behind every major case really requires uh, lawyers in my position to dot every and cross every T because if you don't and you go to trial and lose, um, you know, you're going to hear about it. And that necessarily takes time. So I don't think anybody really feels badly that a, a, a serious homicide case or aggravated sexual assault case takes time to prepare. And, you know, most of that delay, I think, would be attributable to the de- defense, filing motions, conducting discovery, doing depositions, doing everything they need to do. Uh, that said, you know, lots of cases don't really require an enormous amount of um, time. And if there were judges and courtrooms and prosecutors available, uh, there'd be uh, an opportunity to try some of these, lots of these cases, way, way quicker than they Well, what what do you think is the most important thing that could be done in the near future to eliminate the delays? A couple of different things. One, to return to local courts control of their scheduling and docketing practices. Uh, A lot of the individual knowledge uh, that goes into managing a docket correctly is is really discouraged under their current management practice. So if you had a local clerk that knew what cases were which and which ones were likely to take time and who could schedule them accordingly with a fair amount of um, freedom, I think that would just make things work faster. Secondly, we now have, like it or not, a huge bubble of pending cases caused by the shutdown of the pandemic. And what needs to be done is to um, get retired judges, um, double the amount of time, and, and start being serious about trying to try these cases. You know, I'm sure you're aware, I mean, you list uh, 40 cases on a list for pretrial conference, and you say, okay, whichever of these cases aren't resolved by the end of the day, you're coming back, and we're going to draw a jury tomorrow. And we're going to keep drawing juries until we uh, draw two for each trial date. Uh, Out of those 40, you'll wind up trying four, and you'll get rid of 36. Uh, That kind of uh, thing just isn't happening right now. Well, you know, I'm, uh, 
I'm a retired judge, and I, w I would really like to help with this, but I can't by rule because I'm, I'm, an, I'm an elected member of, of the select board of my town and the planning commission of my town. And by rule, by rule of law, I can't sit on the bench if I hold a political office, which doesn't make a great deal of sense to me. It may make sense in Grand Isle County, where I live, <laughs> but I don't think it would make sense if I had, um, you know, driven up to Newport, which I've done in the past. <laughs> you know, I've gotten around it. That's one thing about the uh, being a judge, you get to travel a lot. David, is there anything else you'd like to add? I've been, I'm really happy that you were able to do this today. Anything else you want to bring up? No, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and always uh, nice to talk to you. No, um, you talk to me. You're, you've been nicer to me today than you were when you were a judge. <laughs> well, you know, you're a hard man to control, you know. You got to do, you got to do your best to keep order in the courtroom. Thank you very much, David. Take care. Be, be, be well. Bye-bye. I hope that you'll, you'll uh, get a hold of this from your local station uh, when it's released and send it around to your friends. I think this is very important stuff. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>